Good afternoon, our dear students. I'm glad to see you here. Uh, and uh, today we have a lecture for fourth year students for second semester of fourth year OMM groups. Uh, previous semester you taught uh, lectures from endocrinology and gastroenterology. And now we start with you new cycle. Uh, it is cycle of hematology. And first lecture from this cycle uh, we name anemias. Uh, it is a very big part of hematology and really big part of internal medicine in general. Uh, anemia it is a syndrome that includes a huge number of uh, different disease, different disorders and uh, symptoms of some other disease. And uh, volume of information really very very big. That's why during today's lecture uh, I include just the main things, uh, but my presentation, uh, my presentation uh, quite uh, big. That's why on some slide I will stop very quickly and some slide for yourself working because I don't uh, have time and timing of lecture does not let me uh, to explain you everything. That's why uh, the most of this information, of course, is usual for yourself working, but if it's not uh, understandable something, if you have question, if you have some difficult moment, you always can uh, write to me, to teachers of our department, and we will are uh, always glad to help you with these, these difficult moments. That's why I'll be waiting always for your questions, for your uh, comments. Um, uh, about this and all other topics. Uh, you can write it here under the video, you can write it in our Facebook page. Uh, it is closed, it's just for students and teachers for discussion, some organizational and educational moments and all uh, discussions of lectures we usually do there. It named Propedeptics of Internal Medicine and Physical Rehabilitation Department. And as usual, uh, uh, I uh, have lecture with lectures with you, like uh, most lectures of this department. My name is Maria Brinza. Uh, I'm a head of this department and let continue our lecture cycle. Okay, our today's lecture, I uh, told you that it names anemia. Uh, it is plan of our today's lecture, you can see on the slide. Let's give definition in general. What is anemia? Anemia it is a disease or clinical syndrome that consists of lowered ability of blood to carry oxygen that we usually name hypoxia due to decreased quantity and functional capacity or structural disturbances of red blood cells and decreased hemoglobin concentration or hematocrit in the blood. A severe form of anemia in which the hematocrit is below 10% is called uh, the hyper, uh, hyperanemia. World Health Organization criteria is hemoglobin less than uh, 13 grams per deciliter in men and less than 12 grams per deciliter in women. Uh, the rise criteria for patients with malignancy are hemoglobin less than 14 in men and less than 12 in female patient. Uh, you see epidemiology of anemia, uh, the prevalence of it a little bit different in different countries, so you can see it on the slide. Uh, and here uh, it's uh, prevalence in different age group. You see that uh, in uh, more aged people, uh, the risk of anemias uh, become high. And it is the highest uh, in adults, young adults from uh, 17 until 50 and for in person after 75 in aged patients. Uh, okay. Uh, Prevalence of severity of anemia. Yes, uh, in uh, most cases it is mild or moderate, and rare case it, it is severe. It is, uh, yeah, it is severe. Okay, etiology. Uh, for discussing etiology, let's divide the basic forms of anemia. Uh, the 
principally different causes of anemia divide on blood loss when it is no enough erythrocytes and hemoglobin due to blood loss. Uh, next cause, basic, it is deficient erythropoiesis. It is not enough hemoglobin and not enough uh, red blood cells due to abnormal erythropoiesis. Next cause, it is excessive hemolysis or red blood cells destruction. And one more case, it is fluid overload or what we named hypervolemia. Uh, let's stop on each one. Blood loss. Blood loss can be acute and chronic. You know it from the surgery and uh, anesthesiology. Anemia does not develop until several hours after acute blood loss when interstitial fluid diffuses into the intravascular space and dilutes the remaining red blood cells mass. During the first few hours, however, levels of polymorphonuclear granulocyte platelets and in severe hemorrhage, immature white blood cells and normal blood may rise. Chronic blood loss results in anemia if loss is more rapid than can be replaced or more commonly if accelerated erythropoiesis depletes body iron stores. Uh, deficient erythropoiesis. Deficient erythropoiesis has a myriad causes. Complete cessation of erythropoiesis results in a decline in red blood cells for about 10 to 10 percent a week and nearly 1% a day. Impaired erythropoiesis, even if not sufficient to decrease the number of red blood cells, often causes abnormal red blood cell size and shape. Uh, here you see scheme of uh, erythropoiesis uh, and you see a different link that can be damaging during deficient erythropoiesis. Uh, and on all these stages, it is production its own forms of uh, only of young erythrocytes. Yes, it is from stale cells. After it, um, it is burst forming erythroid cells. It is colony forming proerythroblasts, erythroblasts, reticulocytes, and after it, red blood cells. According to where is the damage, uh, this form we can find uh, during our investigations. Excessive hemolysis. Excessive hemolysis can be caused by intrinsic abnormalities of red blood cells or by extrinsic factors such as presence of antibodies on their surface that lead to uh, their early destruction. An enlarged spleen sequester uh, uh, and destroys red blood cells more rapidly than normal. Some causes of hemolysis deform as well as destroy red blood cells. Excessive hemodialysis then does not normally decrease reticulocyte production unless iron or other essential nutrients are depleted. Uh, here you see um, levels of hemo hemolysis um, during laboratory tests uh, according to if, uh, its velocity, yes, and color. Uh, color of analysis in different case from zero till severe hemolysis. Fluid overload or hypervolemia. It causes decreased hemoglobin concentration and apparent anemia uh, or directly it is an okay number of erythrocyte or okay volume of hemoglobin but due to fluid overload yes the solution in solution it is not enough percent of both of them. General causes of hypervolemia include excessive sodium or fluid intake, sodium or water retention and fluid shift into the intravascular space. Anemia of pregnancy is induced by blood volume expansion. Uh, blood loss. Uh, blood loss can be acute and chronic according to classification. Deficient erythropoiesis we can classify in microcytic, normochromic and normocytic and macrocytic. And excessive hemolysis due to extrinsic red blood cells defects. Reticular endothelial hyperactivity with splenomegaly. 
it can be immunologic abnormalities, mechanical injury, excessive hemolysis due to intrinsic brain blood cells defects, membrane alterations, acquired membrane alterations congenital, metabolic disorders like inherited enzyme de uh, deficiencies, and hemoglobinopathies. Mechanisms. Uh, if we talk about anemia due to blood loss, a reduction in oxygen carrying capacity occurs along with a decrease of intravascular volume with resultant hypoxia and hypovolemia. Hypovolemia leads to hypotension, which is detected by strange receptors in the carotid bulb, aortic arc, heart, and lungs, and transmitted by the impulses along afferent fibers of the vagal and uh, glossopharyngeal nerves of the medulla oblongata, cerebral cortex, and pituitary gland. Uh, okay, a person can have a low hematocrite and not be anemic. You see example here. Uh, in the medulla, in blood loss, sympathetic outflow is enhanced, while parasympathetic activity is diminished. Increased sympathetic overflow leads to norepinephrine release from sympathetic nerve endings and discharge of epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal medulla. Sympathetic connection to the hypothalamic nuclei increases antidiuretic hormone secretion from the pituitary gland. Uh, okay, uh, here. Uh, example of peptic ulcer extend beyond the lamina propria and how it leads to uh, anemia. The chronic ulcer with a chronic uh, small but chronic blood loss can lead uh, to uh, anemia, but through the increase of vagal activity, vagal stimulation. Uh, through the reduced alkali secretion, uh, it worsening. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, it was checking of uh, our offensive supply. Uh, and all this mechanism worsening uh, anemia. Uh, okay, in blood loss, uh, take part antidiuretic hormone that increases free water reabsorption in distal collecting tubules. In response to decreased renal perfusion, juxtaglomerular cells in the afferent arterioles release renin into the renal circulation, leading to increased angiotensin 1, which is converted by angiotensin converting enzyme to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has a potent pressure effect on arteriolar smooth muscle and stimulates the zona glomerulosa of adrenal cortex to produce aldosterone. Uh, aldosterone increases uh, sodium reabsorption from the proximal tubules of the kidney, thus increasing intravascular volume. The primary effect of the sympathetic nervous system is to maintain perfusion to the tissue by increasing systemic vascular resistance. The augmented venous tone increases the preload. In states of hypovolemic hypoxia, the increased venous tone due to sympathetic discharge is through the dominated vasodilator effects uh, of hypoxia. Counter-regulatory uh, hormones like glucagon, epinephrine, cortisol, it, what we name counter-insular, are taught to shift intracellular water to the intravascular space, perhaps because they result in hyperglycemia. Tissue oxygen delivery is a major controlling factor of erythropoiesis through the synthesis and release the erythropoietin by proximal tubular cells and peritubular interstitial cells in the kidney. Uh, erythropoietin synthesis is governed by the activation of hypoxia-inducible factor 1, which controls the metabolic responses of multiple gene products of hypoxia. 
Uh, here you see scheme of pathophysiological mechanism contributing to anemia in patients with, for example, inflammatory bowel disease uh, that includes uh, macrophage. Uh, uh, activation uh, that takes by uh, takes part uh, enterocytes with the transport of uh, iron and uh, the chemicals uh, okay HIV one beans and activate the hypoxia responsive transcriptional enhancer and uh, erythropoietin gene regulatory uh, re uh, region that irregulate erythropoietin expression Erythropoietin stimulates erythroid precursor cells, leading to increased proliferation and shortening of their maturation time. The marrow responds to increase erythropoietin maximally in four to seven days if enough iron is if available. If present iron, erythropoietin in a very short time in, uh, stimulate uh, production of erythrocytes. Here you see a uh, microscopic picture in blood loss patient. In picture A, it is peripheral blood in several megaloblastic anemia. And here you see not enough time to, of, enough, and not enough uh, number of erythrocytes, but they are big, they contain a lot of hemoglobin. Uh, we name it megaloblastic anemia. And picture B, it is bone marrow in severe megaloblastic anemia. The same case, but uh, on the second picture, picture B, it is looking of bone marrow. Uh, okay, erythropoiesis can be increased uh, as much as factor uh, 8. Typical and endocrine loop feedback mechanism, there is an inverse relation between hemoglobin and erythropoietin levels measured in the blood. This relation is somewhat distorted in the anemia associated with inflammation of chronic disease, in which there may be a blotted erythropoietin response. Uh, adaptation to anemia. Uh, it is a uh, important moment, uh, important moment in anemia clinic that give you a lot of different signs that help you in diagnostic, and help you to understand a lot of changes in patient's organism. Modulation of oxygen affinity largely mediated by increase in red blood cells 2, 3, uh, B phosphoglycerate. Increased production of erythropoietin, the main growth factor for red blood cells production. Redistribution of flow to benefit of myocardium, brain and muscle. Increase in cardiac output, reduction of mixed uh, venous oxygen tension to increase the arterial venous oxygen difference. Classification by morphology. By morphology, we can divide all anemias on microcytosis, normocytosis, and macrocytosis. Uh, it depends on size of erythrocytes. If it is less than 70, uh, uh, it is micro. Uh, when it is more than 100, it is macro. From 70 to, uh, to 100, it is normal range. Uh, and uh, in case of macrocytosis and normal red, uh, red cell volume, it can be thalassemia minor, anemia of chronic disease, some hemoglobinopathy. In high, high volume, it is iron deficiency, hemoglobin, uh, H disease, some anemia of chronic disease, some thalassemia minor, fragmentation hemolysis. Uh, in normal cytosis, uh, in normal RDV, anemia of chronic disease, hereditary spherocytosis, some hemoglobinopathy traits, acute bleeding, high, uh, it is only or partially treated iron or vitamin deficiency, sick cell syndrome. And macrocytosis. Uh, uh, Normal uh, red cell distribution wise in aplastic anemia and some myelodysplasias. In uh, high red blood cell distribution wise, it is vitamin B12 or folate deficiency, immune, uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia called agglutin disease, some myelodysplasias, liver disease, thyroid disease, alcohol. And you see, just for two uh, signs in uh, blood analysis, according to uh, uh, 
size of uh, erythrocyte of red blood cells and according to uh, red cells distribution wise just according to two signs uh, we can suspect a cause you see the diff difference in the different causes uh, okay uh, classification according to uh, etiology it can be acquired uh, due to for example mechanical like March chemoglobin urea or artificial halt wells it can be microangiopathic like disseminated intravascular hemolysis thrombotic thrombocytopenic uh, purpura and vasculitis it can be due to parasites and microorganisms, for example, in malaria, bartonellosis, babesiosis, clostridium, and perfringers. And it can be due to worm type autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Uh, another quite form, uh, for example, antibody mediated. Here we include uh, cardiopathic syndromes like cold agglutinin disease, paroxysmal cold hemoglobin urea and cryoglobin, uh, cryoglobin emia, and transfusion reactions. Uh, it is uh, complications after blood transfusions. Uh, another acquired forms it is hypersplenism. It can be red blood cells membrane disorder that includes poor cells hemolysis and acquired acantosis and acquired stoma, uh, stomatocytosis. It can be due to chemical injury and complex chemicals like due to uh, arsenic, copper, chlorate, spider, scorpion and snake venoms. Hereditary forms of uh, anemias. Uh, due to red blood cells loss or destruction. It is hemoglobinopathies like sick cell disease, uh, unstable hemoglobins. It can be hereditary red cells membrane disorders. And here we include several forms. It's cytoskeletal membrane disorders, lipid membrane disorders, membrane disorders associated with abnormality or uh, offer uh, uh, site antigens and membrane disorder associated with abnormal transport and red cell enzyme defects and porphyrias it is such separate forms of uh, red blood cells congenital problems uh, okay uh, and acquired forms due to red blood cells under production or hypoplastic anemias it is pluripotent stem cell failure, like aplastic anemia due to radiation-induced drug and chemical viruses, or it can be idiopathic or without cause. Anemia or leukemia and of myelodysplastic syndromes. Anemia associated with a marrow infiltration, like multiple myeloma, myelofibrosis carcinoma. Erythroid progenitor cell failure. Uh, like pure red uh, cell aplasia with parvovirus B19 infection, drugs associated with uh, timoma autoantibodies, endocrine disorders, acquired sideroblastic anemia. It is functional impairment of erythroid and other uh, progenitors due to nutritional and other causes. It can be nutritional deficiency like iron B12, folic per uh, pyridoxine, chronic renal failure or anemia of chronic disease and inflammation. And hereditary forms of underproduction or hereditary uh, hypoplastic. It is pluripotent stem cell failure, erythroid progenitor cell failure, functional impairment of erythroid and other progenitors due to nutritional and other causes. Here we include megaloblastic anemias, uh, inborn purine and pyridomine metabolic defects. Disorders of iron metabolism, hereditary sideroblastic anemia. Uh, and clinical classification uh, or clinical forms that we usually put in our diagnosis. Here uh, we include alpha thalassemia, anemia of chronic disease, aplastic anemia, beta thalassemia, hemolytic anemia, iron deficiency anemia, megaloblastic anemia, myeloftisic uh, anemia, pernicious anemia, sickle cell anemia, and spur cell anemia.
it is the main and most often forms you saw how a lot it was uh, in those classifications uh, of course i can't stop on each type because it is a huge number uh, now i stop on clinical picture in general and the several most often forms more information for your individual uh, work or in extra class uh, discussion okay general symptoms for all anemias it is easy fatigue and loss of energy unusually rapid heartbeat particularly with exercise shortness of breath particularly with exercise pale skin leg cramps coldness in the hands and feet insomnia lightheadedness uh, faintness signs of heart failure a hunger for strange substances such as paper iris or dirt in condition paled pica Upward uh, curvature of the nails, referred as coelonychias. Soreness of the mouth with cracks of corners. You see uh, here uh, pictures of coelonychias and pica. Uh, anemia caused by B12 deficiency. I have uh, a little uh, specific signs like tingling, pins and needle sensation in the hands and, or feet. Lost of sense of touch because it usually associated with polyneuro, peripheral polyneuropathies. A warm gait and difficulty uh, walking. Uh, clumsiness and stuffiness of the arms and legs and dementia. Uh, anemia caused by chronic lead poisoning. Uh, what specific? It is a blue-black line on the gums referred to as a lead line. Abdominal pain, constipation, vomiting. You see how look on the picture a black, uh, blue-black line of the gums. Uh, anemia caused by chronic red blood cells destruction. It usually associated with jaundice. It is yellow skin and eyes. You remember from gastro, uh, it was lecture about jaundice, hemolytic uh, hemolysis. It is one of the often cause. Brown or red urine, leg ulcers, failure uh, to thrive and in infancy and symptoms of gallstones. Uh, sickle cell anemia, the specific uh, symptoms or not specific, more typical for sickle cell syndrome. It is fatigue, susceptibility to infection, delayed growth and development in children, episode of severe pain, especially in joints, abdomen and limbs. Anemia caused by sudden red blood cell destruction. It is abdominal pain, brain or red urine, jaundice, small bruises under the skin, seizures and symptoms of kidney failure. Uh, okay, what interesting we always stop in history taking in anamnesis. The duration of anemia can be established by obtaining a history of previous blood examinations and, if necessary, by acquiring those reports. Uh, similarly, a history of rejection as a blood donor or prior prescription of uh, hematinic provides clues that anemia was detected previously. Obtain a family history for anemia, jaundice, cholelithiasis, splenomegaly, bleeding disorders, and abnormal hemoglobin. Documents of patients' occupation, hobbies, prior medical treatment, drugs, including over-the-counter medications and vitamins, and household exposure to potentially noxious agents. Uh, insecticides, pains, solvents, hyagias. In searching for blood loss, carefully documents pregnancy, abortions, and menstrual loss. Patients do not appreciate the significance of teristols, but changes in bowel habits can be useful in uncovering neoplasms of colon. Uh, hemorrhoidal blood loss is difficult to quantify and it may be overlooked and overestimated from the patient to another. Seek a history of gastrointestinal complaints that may suggest gastritis, peptic ulcers, hiatal hernias, and or diverticulum. Abnormal urine color can occur in renal and hepatic uh, disease in hemolytic anemia. A dietary history must include fruits, 
that the patient eats and those that he or she avoids as well as an estimate of their quantity. Changes in the body weight are important with regard to dietary intake and can suggest the presence of malabsorption or an underlying wasting disease of infections, metabolic or neoplastic origin. Obtain a history of fever or identify a presence of fever because infections, neoplasm and collagen vascular disease can cause anemia. Uh, the occurrence of purpura ecchymosis and petechia suggests the occurrence of either thrombocytopenia or other bleeding disorders. This may be uh, an incidence either that more than one bone marrow lineage is involved or that coagulopathy is caused of anemia because of bleeding. Cold intolerance can be an important symptom of hypothyroidism or lupus erythematosus. Paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria and certain macroglobulinemias. Uh, macro the relation of dark urine and other physical activity or time of day can be important in much hemoglobinuria and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Explosion or presence or absence of symptoms suggesting an underlying cause such as cardiac, hepatic and renal disease, chronic infection, endocrinopathy or malignancy. A geographic history can also be important in establishing a etiology. Ok, accent on physical examination in patient with anemia. The skin and mucous membranes are often bypassed or that pale, abnormal pigmentation, icterus, spider nevi, petechia, purpura, angiomas, ulcerations, palmar erythema, coarseness of hair, puffiness of the face, thinning of the lateral aspect of the eyebrows, nail defects and usually prominent venous pattern of the abdominal wall are missed in the rush to examine the heart and the lungs. Uh, here you see a picture, first picture, it is a purpura, uh, second it is uh, uh, how it looks a spider navy and thinning of the lateral aspect of the eyebrows. It is all typical or for anemia. Uh, uh, examine optic fundi carefully but not the expensive of the conjunctiva and the sclera, which can show pallor, icterus, splinter, hemorrhages, petechia, uh, coma signs of the conjunctival vessels or teleangiectasia that can be helpful in planning additional studies. Perform systematic examination for palpable enlargement of lymph nodes for evidence of infection or neoplasia. Uh, bilateral edema is useful is disclosing underlying cardiac, renal or hepatic disease whereas unilateral edema may portent lymphatic obstruction due to malignancy that can't be observed or palpated. Carefully search for hepatomegaly and splenomegaly because in patients with chronic disorders these organs are firm, non-tender and non-nodular in the patients with carcinoma. They may be hard and nodular. Here you see on the picture massive hepatosplenomegaly in patient with severe malarial anemia due to plasmodium, uh, plasmodium falciparum infection. Erectile and pelvic examination can't be negle uh, neglected because tumor or infection of these organs can be a cause of anemia. The neurologic examination should include test of position sense and vibratory sense, examination of the cranial nerves and testing for tender reflexes. The heart should not be ignored because enlargement may provide evidence of the duration and severity of anemia. And murmurs may be the first evidence of infective endocarditis that could explain the etiology of anemia. Patients may present in several ways. Uh, during diagnosis. The urgency in which anemia is evaluated depends on severity at presentation. Patients with an acute severe hemorrhage presence with a hypovolemia and symptoms and signs of the underlying cause. Many patients with no acute or active bleeding and asymptomatic of the anemia is, is only noted uh, on a full blood count takes as part of assessment or unrelated condition. 
Here you see algorithm of assessment, laboratory assessment of anemia. We use for it first of all the first screening. It is a uh, CBC, complete blood cloud with a uh, cell amount and uh, other different signs of CBC. And you see uh, the uh, cell volume. According to cell volume, uh, we can define different anemias. Uh, microcytic anemia. Uh, first of all, for microcytic anemia, we suspect the most often case it is iron deficiency. Uh, what studies we use in this case? A low serum iron, high total iron bidding capacity and low ferritin indicates iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency produces uh, 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 produce an associated reactive thrombocytosis that provides an additional clue. Iron deficiency is not a diagnosis and requires further investigation to elucidate uh, the cause. Diets low in meat. Uh, generalized malabsorption and malnutrition. It is can be combined vitamin B12 and folate deficiency. A history uh, of bleeding, like excessive menstrual losses in women, upper and lower GI bleeding, peptic ulcer disease, cirrhosis, idiopathic pulmonary hemosiderosis, excessive blood donation, runner's anemia. All these cases uh, not directly uh, involve anemia, but it leads to iron deficiency and iron deficiency lead to severe chronic anemia. Signs of iron deficiency, objective signs, it is coilonychia, angular chelosis, uh, glossitis and thinning hair. Investigations in this case are guided by history and examination and include fecal occult blood testing to exclude GI bleeding, upper GI endoscopy, immunoglobulin A tissue transglutaminase test, colonoscopy, flow cytometry, transvaginal ultrasound for different causes of menorrhagia. A low serum iron, low total iron binding capacity and low ferritin suggest anemia of chronic disease. Usually it is microcytic too. A history of underlying inflammation, infection, neoplasm, autoimmune reactions and injury to tissue from trauma and surgery is usually present. A serum erythropoietin level is usually normal or mildly elevated. Hypothyroidism and vitamin C deficiency may produce a falsely low ferritin level. The most important cause uh, to exclude uh, thalassemia. Uh, a family history is usually present in this case. The disease is more common in individuals from Mediterranean, Middle East and South and Asian descent. The severity ranges from asymptomatic to severe transfusion-dependent symptoms. Uh, the examination findings may be normal or reveal splenomegaly, jaundice, abdominal distension and icterus. Morphological changes including skeletal abnormalities, large head, a chipmunk faces and a mis uh, misaligned teeth and seen in beta thalassemia, intermedia and major. Uh, distinct features in uh, FBC that suggest a diagnosis include a marked decrease in, uh, in cell volume, usually close to 17 femtoliters, uh, with a low mean corpuscular hemoglobin, target cells of the peripheral smear and elevated reticulocyte count, more than 2%. Uh, a man's dangerous index, which is relation between MCV and red blood cells, less 13 is suggestive for thalassemia, and index more than 14 suggests iron deficiency. Thalassemia, uh, like microcytic anemia, is diagnosed using hemoglobin electrophoresis. The presence of hemoglobin H, hemoglobin BART and concomitant hemoglobinopathies different is diagnostic for alpha thalassemia. A high hemoglobin F with minimal or absent hemoglobin A and elevated hemoglobin A2 is diagnostic for beta thalassemia. 
and here you see a uh, uh, difference between ADA and uh, iron deficiency anemia and thalassemias. Uh, hypoproliferative uh, anemias uh, and uh, they are normocytic. Let's discuss diagnostic of this group. Uh, normocytic anemias include disorders that decrease red blood cell production. Hemodological malignancies and aplastic anemia are most important diagnoses to exclude and are usually associated with multiple cytopenias. An isolated anemia is usually due to pure red cells aplasia, which may be self-limiting or persistent. Chronic renal failure or hypothyroidism can cause an isolated anemia. Secondary hyperparathyroidism exacerbates the anemia of chronic renal failure. Symptoms of bleeding, easy bruising, night sweats or weight loss suggest hematological malignancy or aplastic anemia. Parvovirus infection, infections of mononucleosis, viral hepatitis, malaria, respiratory infections, gastroenteritis, primary atypical pneumonia, and mumps can result to self-limiting pure red blood cell aplasia. Uh, Anti-epileptic medications like phenytoin, carbamazepine, valproate sodium, azathioprine, sulfonylamides, in, uh, isoniazide and procainamide cause pure red blood cells aplasia. Uh, they may be a history of features of chronic renal failure and hypothyroidism. A chemosis of petechia due to thrombocytopenia suggests hematological malignancy, myelodysplastic syndrome or aplastic anemia. Lymphadenopathy of fever suggests malignancy or infections. A splenomegaly may be seen in hematological malignancies. Clinical features of systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, dermatomyositis, polyarthritis nodosa or scleroderma resulting in persistent pure red blood cells aplasia may be present in these patients. Abnormal lung examination if lung cancer is a primary cancer or for example breast mass if breast cancer is the primary may be present in such patients too. Moreover, in normocytic anemia, a positive Trousseau sign or Kvostek sign in patients with chronic renal failure indicates hypocalcemia, probably due to associated secondary hyperparathyroidism. FBC may be shown in associated with cytopenia and characteristic changes specific to hematological malignancy. A pancytopenia suggests aplastic anemia or may be due to chemotherapy or radiotherapy. An isolated anemia suggests pure, uh, pure red cell aplasia or anemia due to chronic renal failure. Bone marrow aspiration provides a definitive diagnosis of aplastic anemia, acute leukemia, chronic myelogenous leukemia or bone marrow metastasis. Antipyrovirus antibodies are positive in parvovirus infection. The most common infections cause or pure red blood cell aplasia. Other tests to, to consider. It is hepatitis serology to exclude an active hepatitis. Monospot test or Epstein by virus immunoglobulin M to exclude infections mononucleosis. Uh, thin, uh, thick and thin peripheral smear to exclude malaria if history and findings suggested. Thyroid function test TSH will be elevated and free T4 reduced in hypothyroidism. Antinuclear antibodies which are positive to uh, lupus erythematosus or scleroderma. Other tests to consider in a normocytic anemia. It is rheumatoid factor which is positive in rheumatoid arthritis, serum creatinine which is elevated in dermatomyositis, uh, chest X-ray which may show infiltrates in atypical pneumonia or smooth mouth in Timoma, erythropoietin levels which may be decreased in patients with chronic renal failure, uh, serum calcium and parathyroid hormone levels should be considered if associated secondary hyperparathyroidism is suspected.
And here uh, algorithm of diagnosis of uh, hyperproliferative normocytic anemia. You see, according to MCV range, uh, in this algorithm you see by the red uh, round. Uh, and a normocytic anemia can be hyperproliferative. Potential diagnoses include hemolytic anemias with microangiopathic hemolytic anemias, autoimmune hemolytic anemias, drugs, infections, inherited conditions, transfusion reactions, or burns. Drugs that can cause hemolysis include penicillin, methyl dopa, levodopa, uh, quinidines, uh, cephalosporins, and some non steroid anti inflammatory drugs. Cyclosporins, tacrolimus, clopidogrel, oral contraceptive pills, and some chemotherapy drugs may cause hemolytic uremic syndrome. The triggers of disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC. Uh, that includes ongoing severe infections, sepsis, or malignancy, obstetric emergency, trauma, births, and envenomation, uh, drug overdose, or any cause of endothelial damage. The presence of acute onset neurological symptoms, including headache, confusion, focal weakness, seizures, or coma, should prove a suspicion of thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Uh, female patients may have associated menorrhagia. Uh, diagnosis of hyperproliferative, sudden onset dizziness, uh, headache, mental status, changes, loss of sensation or motor strength, chest pain or pressure, dyspnea or edema in patients with known hypertension should prompt suspicion of malignant hypertension. A history of renal failure or eclampsia may also be present. An expounding vascular skin lesion in a young infant or child should prompt suspicion uh, of hemangioma. A history of prosthetic valve replacement may indicate hemolysis induced by prothesis. Mm -hmm. uh, cutaneous burns affecting more than 10% of the body's surface area can cause a hemolytic uh, anemia or triggers of disseminated intravascular coagulation. Uh, Infective causes include cytomegalovirus, infection mononucleosis, toxoplasmosis, and leishmaniosis. Uh, bloody diarrhea should prompt suspicion of Escherichia coli infection and hemolytic uremic syndrome. Patients with inherited hemolytic anemia, such as sick cell anemia, hereditary spherocytosis, or glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, may have a positive family history. Persistent pain and, uh, in the skeleton, chest or abdomen, priorism, uh, lower uh, extremity skin ulcers or an acute uh, pneumonia-like syndrome suggests sickle cell anemia. There may be a previous history of autoimmune disease like uh, lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, etc. Or lymphoproliferative disorders like non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which can lead to autoimmune hemolytic anemia. The autoimmune disease may also cause pure red blood cell aplasia, in which case the reticulocyte count would be low, with normal lactate dehydrogenase, uh, haptoglobin, and bilirubin levels. Recent blood transfusion may indicate hemolysis due to transfusion reaction. Occupational or home exposure to lead uh, should prompt suspicions of lead toxicity. Features of microangiopathy disease, uh, purpura or ecchymosis, malignant hypertension, edema, oliguria or polyuria, focal neurological signs, and hypertensive retinopathy. Splenomegaly is seen in hereditary spherocytosis. Lymphadenopathy may indicate infections, mononucleosis, leukemia, lymphoma, or autoimmune disease. A thrombocytopenia with schist uh, schistocytes strongly suggest a macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Spherocytes suggest autoimmune hemolytic anemia or hereditary spherocytosis. Hereditary spherocytosis is associated with increased mean corpuscular hemoglobin. A cycling of red blood cells is diagnostic to sickle cell anemia. 
contains bodies. Uh, as the rotocytes or by cells are seen uh, in G6PD deficiency. Elevated lactide dihedral kinase and bilirubin levels with decreased haptoglobin are strongly suggestive for hemolytic anemia. Serop creatinine may be elevated in patients with hemolytic uremic syndrome or malignant hypertension. Moreover, in hyperproliferative normocytic anemia, proton bin time and activated partial proton bin time, which are prolonged in disseminated intravascular coagulation, but normal in other microangiopathic hemolytic anemias. Intravascular coagulation panel shows uh, elevated D -D dimers and fibrin degradation products with low fibrinogen. Uh, in patients with disseminated intravascular coagulation. X-rays and MRI scanning is suspected regions reveal uh, international hemangiomas. Uh, direct antiglobulin COMS test is positive in autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Six cell anemia is diagnosed on uh, FBC. Osmotic fragility test is positive in hereditary uh, spherocytosis. G6PD assays identifies uh, deficiency of the enzyme. Monospot test or EBV immunoglobulin M is positive in infection mononucleosis. CMV immunoglobulin uh, cytomegalovirus immunoglobulin A M is positive for CMV infection. Double sandwich immunoglobulin ELISA or immunoglobulin G avidity test is positive for immunoglobulin uh, M in acute toxoplasmosis. Splenic or bone marrow aspirates show uh, amastogotes of parasites in leishmaniosis. Blood uh, lead uh, levels which is elevated in lead toxicity. And scheme algorithm of diagnosis of hyperproliferative. Whew, uh, okay, very quickly, uh, you see a huge different situations, a uh, huge different uh, ways or diagnosis of hyperproliferative or normocytic anemia. Try uh, at home to stop on each uh, phrase more detailized. Okay, megaloblastic or macrocytic anemia. Uh, the main causes of to consider a vitamin B12 or folate deficiency or drugs that interfere with DNA synthesis. Discontinuation or causative medications lead to resolution of the anemia. Poor intake uh, due to malnutrition, alcohol abuse or stink venom or low protein diets can produce deficiency of vitamin B12 or folate or both of them. A history of celiac disease, tropical sprue, Crohn's disease, previous gastritis or intestinal surgery or bacterial overgrowth may indicate malabsorption. A swollen, red, uh, red painful tonger, angular stomatitis, partial hyperpigmentation of the skin and mucous membranes and persistent myopyroxia are symptoms of folate deficiency. Uh, known causative medications include porine analogs, pyridomine analogs, reductase inhibitors, metatrexate, trimetoprim, anticonvulsants, oral contraceptives, cycloserine, p aminosalicylic acid, metformin, colchicine, neomycin, and biguanides. Uh, uh, hydroxyurea, in particular, is known to cause. Uh, oval macrocytosis with uh, macro cells volume more than uh, 110 uh, femtoliters. Serum vitamin B12 levels are decreased and serum methyl malonic acid levels and elevate in vitamin B12 deficiency. Normal serum homocysteine levels make folate deficiency unlikely. Anti-intrinsic factor and uh, parietal cell antibodies are positive in pernicious anemia. And scheme of diagnosing of microcytic anemia. This algorithm you see on this slide. Please work is with it uh, to systematize your knowledge. 
Okay, macrocytic non-megaloblastic anemias. Causes to consider non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemias include alcohol abuse, myelodysplastic syndrome, chronic liver disease, and congenital bone marrow failure. High alcohol intake indicates alcohol-induced anemia, which usually persists for months after total abstinence. A history of chronic liver disease indicates liver disease-induced anemia. History of prior exposure of petroleum distillates, especially benzene, chemotherapy or radiotherapy should prompt suspicion of myelodysplastic syndrome. A history of fever, chills, fatigue, weakness, recurrent infection, anorexia, night sweats, shortness of breath and easy bruising should prompt suspicions of myelodysplastic syndrome. Recurrent infection is an infant should prompt suspicions of congenital bone marrow failure syndromes. Examination may reveal stigmata of chronic alcoholism and chronic liver disease. Uh, this keratosis congenital is characterized by the triad of abnormal nails, a reticulated skin, rash and leukoplakia. Skeletal abnormalities and growth retardant uh, are seen in Schwarzman Diamond syndrome. Uh, FBC shows associated neutropenia and uh, thrombocytopenia with microovalocytes in myelodysplastic syndrome. Bone marrow aspiration and biopsy shows myeloblast with immature precursors in myelodysplastic syndrome. Diagnostic features of congenital bone marrow failure syndromes are also identified. Uh, cytogenetics reveal chromosomal translocations in myelodysplastic syndrome. Additional tests for congenital bone marrow syndrome. It is uh, uh, diapoxybutene or uh, metamycin C fragility test is positive for Fanconi anemia. Genetic testing reveals underlying mutations. Uh, okay, scheme of diagnosing of megaloblastic, uh, non-megaloblastic, sorry, um, microcytic anemia. Okay, treatment. Treatment is usually start from lifestyle modification and patient's education. What can we include in anemia? It is information of patients of etiology of the anemia, the significance of their medical condition and the therapeutic options available for treatment. Uh, if no effective specific treatment of underlying disease exists, educate patients requiring periodic transfusions about the symptoms that herald the need for transfusion. Likewise, they should be aware of the potential complications of transfusion. Iron deficiency anemia is treated with changes in diet and iron supplements. If the underlying cause of iron deficiency is loss of blood other than for menstruation, the source of bleeding must be located and stopped. Folic acid and vitamin C deficiency anemias are treated with dietary supplements and increasing these nutrients in diet. If patients' digestive symptoms was trouble absorbing vitamin B12 from the food, he may receive vitamin B12 injections. There is no specific treatment for anemia of chronic disease. If symptoms become severe, a blood transfusion or injections of synthetic erythropoietin, a hormone normally produced by your kidneys, may help stimulate red blood cells production and ease fatigue. Uh, treatment for aplastic anemia may include blood transfusions to boost levels of red blood cells. Patients may need a bone marrow transplantation if bone marrow can't make healthy blood cells. Treatment of anemias associated with bone marrow disease can include simple medications, a chemotherapy of bone or bone marrow transplantation. For hemolytic anemias, management hemolytic anemias includes avoiding suspect medications, treating relation, uh, related infections, and taking drugs that suppress immune system, which may be attacking your red blood cells. Depending 
the severity of anemia, a blood transfusion or plasmapheresis may be necessary. Plasmapheresis it is a type of blood filtering procedure. In certain cases, removal of spleen can be helpful. Uh, treatment for sickle cell anemia may include the administration of oxygen, pain-relieving drugs, oral and IV fluids, blood transfusion, folic acid supplements, and antibiotics. A bone marrow transplant may be an effective treatment in some circumstances. A cancer drug called hydroxyurea, like droxia or hydrea, also is used to treat sickle cell anemia. Thalassemia. It may be treated with blood transfusion, folic acid supplements, removal of the spleen, like splenectomy, bone marrow transplant, or another drug. Erythropoiesis stimulated agent. Uh, the motive for the administration of the erythropoiesis stimulated agent uh, is to maintain hemoglobin at the lowest level that both minimize transfusions and meets the individual person needs. They should not be used for mild or moderate anemia. Uh, they are not recommended in people with chronic kidney disease unless hemoglobin levels are less than 10 gram per deciliter and they have symptoms of anemia. Their use should be along with parenteral iron. Oral iron. Mild to moderate iron deficiency anemia is treated by oral iron supplementation with ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate, and ferrous gluconate. When taking iron supplements, stomach upset or darkening of the feces are commonly experienced. The stomach upset can be alleviated by taking the iron with food. However, this decreases the amount of iron absorbed. Vitamin C aids in the body's ability to absorb iron, so uh, taking oral iron supplements with orange juice uh, is of benefit. Uh, okay, here you see uh, common oral iron, uh, iron medications. It usually uh, ferrous sulfate hydrated, high ferrous sulfate desiccated, ferrous gluconate, or ferrous humorate, and tablet site, and usually usual dosage for these tablets. Injectable iron. In cases where, where oral iron has either proven ineffective, would be too slow, for example, preoperatively, or where absorption is impeded, for example, in cases of inflammation, parenteral iron can be used. The body can absorb up to 6 mg of iron daily from the gastrointestinal tract. In many cases, the patient has deficit of over 1000 mg of iron, which would be required several months to replace. This can be given uh, concurrently with erythropoietin to ensure su sufficient iron for increased rate of erythropoiesis. Here you see uh, typical products uh, of injectable iron. Uh, the doses in patients with chronic, uh, for example, on chronic hemodialysis and doses on, for patients for non, on, not on hemodialysis. Uh, blood transfusions. Uh, blood transfusion in those without symptoms is not recommended until the hemoglobin is below 60 to 80. In those with coronary artery disease who are not actively bleeding, transfusion are only recommended when hemoglobin is below 17 to 80. Transfusion earlier does not improve survival. Transfusions otherwise should not be undertaken in cases of cardiovascular, inst cardiovascular instability. Yes, you see picture of blood transfusions, uh, and uh, one possible option of uh, treatment of anemia it is injections of erythropoietin. It is recombinant human erythropoietin, uh, usually used in such pen like on this picture. Uh, okay, possible uh, to use uh, hyperbaric oxygen. Treatment of exceptional blood loss is recognized as uh, an indication for hyperbaric oxygen by the undersea of hyperbaric medical society. The use of HBO indicated when oxygen are delivered to tissue is not sufficient in patients who can't be given blood transfusion for medical or religious reasons. Hyperbaric oxygen may be used for medical reasons when treat of blood product incompatibility or concert for transmissible disease are factors.
it looks like this it is hyperbaric camera when patient lying and breathe with hyperbaric oxygen uh, okay prognosis and prophylaxis i leave you here please walk at home in this last slides it is prognosis and here you can stop on prophylaxis of different types of anemia and here it is usable abbreviations for today's uh, lectures for today that's all i understand it was quite quick it was quite a lot of difficult information try to work with it because it is a really uh, huge number of different causes and different anemias and trying to remember just some types uh, of this anemia to what group it depends on uh, each several types uh, each type and uh, by the groups how to diagnose and general rules how to treat uh, it my recommendation to working with this lecture uh, because it was a uh, quite difficult i waiting for your questions uh, if you have it uh, about topic of this lecture uh, and maybe some comments some discussion from you uh, for today that's all as usual i ask all students who listen in my lecture uh, uh, leave uh, your group number and your name in the comments under the video i remind you that this lecture it is for mm groups it is second semester of fourth year uh, and uh, i waiting for your activity uh, waiting for your feedback and for today that's all see you in one uh, week in a new lecture and now uh, that's all goodbye